The messages you are about to hear were first given on our daily radio broadcast. Dr. Woodrow Kroll is the speaker, and this series of four messages is entitled Crossroads. Here to begin the Bible study with the subject, The Road to Jerusalem, is Woodrow Kroll. Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales depicts an assortment of pilgrims on their way to the city of Canterbury in England. I suppose on any road, on any given day, at any given time, there will be such an assortment of pilgrims. There was such an assortment on the road to Jerusalem one day, the road being the day that Jesus triumphantly entered the city of Jerusalem. Luke chapter 19 records this great event. The other Gospels do as well, but I'd like to look today at Luke chapter 19, verses 28 through 40, to learn something about those who gathered, those pilgrims, on the road to Jerusalem, on the day that the Lord Jesus triumphantly entered the city. Luke's Gospel records that triumphant entry this way. Luke 19, verse 28. And when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereupon yet never man sat. Loose him, and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. Now on this day, as Jesus prepares to enter the city of Jerusalem, just a week before his resurrection, he encounters those who have been with him for three years now. The first people we encounter, the first group of people we encounter on the road to Jerusalem is the disciples of the Lord Jesus. They have been with him now, they have watched him, they have heard his messages, they have listened to his discourses, they have watched his miracles. And now these disciples are nearing the end of the life of the Lord Jesus. Their walk with him is coming to an end in this life. I find it interesting that when Jesus tells the disciples, two of them at least, to go to a nearby city and loose a colt and bring to him, that they do so without question. So let's center our attention for a few moments on the first group of people on the road to Jerusalem. That is, the disciples. Verse 29 of Luke 19 tells us something about the subservience of these disciples. Remember that he is the master, they are the disciples. Sometimes we get that confused, don't we? And occasionally these disciples did as well. Jesus had already taught them that the master is not beneath the servant, nor is the servant above the master. So they are subservient to him because he is the master and they are the disciples. It's important for you and me to remember that. I do not choose my own vocation. I do not choose my own will. I do not choose what I will do today or tomorrow or with the rest of my life. And if you love the Lord Jesus, neither do you, my friend. We are subservient because we are disciples and he is the master. Verse 29 clearly outlines then that he sent two of his disciples, two people whom he knew were subservient to him and whom he knew would obey him. Well, they go to the nearby town and there they find a colt. And in verse 32, we learn something about their obedience, not only their subservience, but their obedience as well. Luke 19, verse 32, and they that were sent went their way, and found even as he had said unto them. I like the way the King James Bible says this because it says, they that were sent went. Sent went. That's what disciples do. When God sends disciples, it should be said of them that they go for him. They are absolutely and totally obedient to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sent, went. Would to God that it is said of us today that when we are sent, it will be said that we went for the Lord Jesus as well. Sent, went. 
Don't forget those two words, friends. They are the secret to happiness as disciples. But verses 34 and 35 tell us that on the way back, they bring the colt to the master, and then something wonderful happens. Verse 34 says, And they said, The Lord hath need of him, and they brought him to Jesus. That's the colt. And they cast their garments upon the colt, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Now this verse shows us something about the adoration of these disciples. Their subservience is seen in the fact that he is the master and they are the disciples. Their obedience is seen in the fact that when they were sent, they went. And their adoration is seen in the fact that when they returned, they spread their garments upon the young colt, and they spread their garments in the way in a show of respect and adoration to the Lord. Now, I don't think that only the disciples put their garments in the way. In fact, if you look at the other Gospels, you learn very quickly that the multitudes who came out of the city also spread their garments in the way for the Lord. And they cut down branches from the trees and put the fronds in the way as well so that Jesus may ride in glory into the city of Jerusalem. Their adoration is entirely toward the Lord Jesus, where it ought to be, and where ours ought to be as well. I read a story one time of Joseph Haydn, the great composer. Haydn was listening to his own performance of the creation in the Vienna Music Hall. Haydn, the great composer, could not help but be overwhelmed by the very work that his hands had created. And at the end of the performance of his oratory of the creation, all the audience stood and they applauded his great achievement. But Haydn was also a disciple of the Lord God of heaven. And while the audience was applauding his great achievement, this enraptured crowd, he motioned that they should not applaud him but they should praise the Lord God of heaven. His hand went skyward to indicate that he is but a disciple, and a disciple is subservient to his master. A disciple is obedient to his master. A disciple adores his master. That's the lesson we learn by seeing this first group of people on the road to Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday morning. Now the disciples are not the only people on this road to Jerusalem. There are other characters in the cast here today, and we see one of those characters at verse 30, Luke chapter 19 and verse 30. Jesus says, Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a colt tied, whereupon yet never man sat. Loose him and bring him here. Now this is not just an ordinary colt, it is a very special colt. We see, first of all, the preparation of the colt. Jesus knew that in the adjacent village there would be a colt there. How do you suppose he knew that? He is the sovereign God of the universe. He knows everything. And Bethphage's donkey was not just there out of chance. The Lord God made sure that that young donkey was there. Nothing that happens with God is haphazard. The program of God is not a haphazard program, it is a sovereign program. You remember the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. His brothers did not like Joseph very much, and they threw him into a pit, and eventually they sold him into slavery. But there in Egypt, where he was sold as a slave, he rose to great power, to a position similar to the prime minister. And later on, when the brothers had to come to Egypt because of the great famine in their land, and Joseph finally revealed himself to his brothers. They were so ashamed at what they had done. But do you remember Joseph's remarks? Joseph said, You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You see, God had placed Joseph in that position to save the land because of his great intelligence given to him by the Lord God. Nothing is haphazard in the program of God. Why is that? Because on any road, on any given day, when you and I are traveling as the disciples of the Lord God, when we are open and obedient and subservient and adoring the Lord God, 
we may be used, and so may something as simple as this colt. Yes, the colt was there because God had put it there. But notice something else about this colt, not just the preparation of the colt, but the purity of the colt as well. It says, Ye shall find a colt tied, whereupon yet never man sat. Loose him, and bring him here. Now this colt was one that had not been broken. In fact, no one had ever sat on this colt before. It was a young colt. It was a pure colt. It was an unused colt. Don't you find it ironic that so many times in the life of the Lord Jesus, He looks for those things which are young and pure and unused to be used by Him. I'm reminded of the story of the birth of the Lord Jesus. This same book, Luke chapter 1, tells us in verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, friends, in Luke chapter 1, he tells us that Mary was a virgin, prepared especially to receive the Son of God. And now in Luke chapter 19, we learn that there is a donkey here upon which man never sat, prepared, pure, specially to receive the Son of God. I can't help but remember that at the end of the Lord Jesus' life, the same thing happens. You remember in Luke chapter 23, it tells us how the Lord Jesus was placed into a tomb, not just any tomb, but a special tomb. Verse 50 says, And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just man. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone wherein never man before was laid. Do you think it's a coincidence that Jesus was born of a virgin, rode on an unbroken colt, and laid in a tomb that had never been used by man. I don't think so. I think this shows God's preparation for the entire life of the Lord Jesus. Everything in Jesus' life and everyone he encountered were there specifically because it was God's plan that they be there. This cult was prepared specifically for the Lord Jesus. All these disciples had to do was be obedient and go into the town and retrieve the colt. And what was the purpose of this young colt? Verse 31 tells us why the Lord Jesus was to ride on this colt. Luke 19 verse 31 says, And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall ye say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. Why would Jesus need to ride into the city of Jerusalem? And if he were riding into the city of Jerusalem, why would he not ride a horse? Why a colt? Why a donkey? Uh, there's a very good reason for that. The donkey was always associated with peace. The horse was always associated with war. We learn from Zechariah 10.3 that you ride a horse to war, but you ride a donkey to peace. The donkeys were used by judges in the Old Testament. You may remember in Judges chapter 10 and verse 4, Jair, one of the judges, had 30 sons who rode donkeys. And in Judges chapter 12, verse 14, Abdon, another one of the judges, had 40 sons and 30 nephews, all of whom rode donkeys. 
One does not ride a donkey to war. One rides a donkey to peace. And Jesus Christ has come this day on this triumphal entry to enter the city not as a man of war, but as a man of peace. Jesus comes to offer himself in peace to these people. But dear friends, this is the first triumphal entry of the Lord Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. There will be another. Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 and following describe the Lord Jesus riding a white horse this time and making war against the nations and establishing his kingdom upon this earth, a kingdom of peace. Yes, because he rode a donkey one time and his peace was spurned, he will ride a horse the second time and his peace will be received. On the road to Jerusalem, we will encounter many, many people, but we will encounter no one who is more curious, no one better prepared, no one more pure, no one more purposeful than this young colt. Wouldn't it have been great to be on that road that day, to walk with the Lord Jesus, to be there when he rode into the city, to hear the crowd shout Hosanna to the highest. But you and I have a better task than that today, dear friends. We walk with him day by day, hand in hand, with the Master, the Lord of the universe.